Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button if you guys are enjoying the content that we're throwing up. And uh, make sure you guys hit the like button if you enjoy the video. And yeah, let's begin. Okay, so we are continuing on with the War of Realms, which I love. I love the War of Realms. I'm glad it's turning out the way it is because it's just like, all right, like this is kind of what it's all been building towards, right? Like everything with Jason Aaron's run of Thor. And that's why I say Jason Aaron's run is going to go down as like one of the greatest runs in Thor history. Like that's, that's, it's amazing the way it's turned out. But again, like Earth is really kind of on its last legs, right? Like the invasion of Malik has seemingly came out of nowhere. And so what it means is like, there's no safe refuge here. And so because of that, like with all this unfolding the way that it is, with Odin basically undertaking the Odin sleep to recharge his energies with Thor missing on Jotunheim and Earth's heroes kind of scattered to the winds trying to protect what they can where they can it turns into we can't really just kind of rest on our laurels and play defense we basically have to start going on the offensive and so the plan of Freya is twofold the first is to destroy the black Bifrost of uh, Malekith and the second is to find Thor now remember the Bifrost itself was destroyed by Mangog when he attacked Asgard and even Asgard itself was mostly destroyed and so because of the fact that the, the, the Bifrost was eliminated there's no real way to send anybody in or anybody out. And so the result of this is that they have to basically go to the Black Bifrost of Malekith and destroy that because that's how Malekith is sending his forces across all the nine realms and consolidating them all back onto Midgard. And so at the same time, Thor is basically missing here. Again, it's, it's one of those cool little things here because what ends up happening is you basically kind of get like this return of the Secret Avengers more or less. Now, the Secret Avengers was a concept that was established during the Heroic Age, right? And the way this worked out, you had Joe Quesada's whole thing where it was like revamp it all, right? Like rework, revamp it all, all that kind of good stuff. So the Avengers were disassembled. We got the new Avengers and then about seven or eight years later the Avengers came back again and so as a result of that during that whole era you had an event called Dark Reign and Dark Reign was a story that actually came out of Secret Invasion when you had Norman Osborn who became the new director of S.H.I.E.L.D. and so as a result of that with Norman Osborn taking over he did what bad guys do and he basically dismantled S.H.I.E.L.D. he established Hammer and then tried to conquer everything so finally once Dark Reign finishes and then the whole thing comes to an end Captain America is put in uh, he's basically put in charge of the whole like intelligence organization more or less he disbands Hammer and he reforms shield but when he does that he creates like these small little avengers teams here and there and one of them is the secret avengers it's basically a black ops team but what we end up getting here is this mission for him to go to jotunheim to get thor and then bring him back again basically the secret avengers carrying out the carrying out the task that they always had so it's cool to see the secret avengers coming back at the same time what we do is we switch over to asgard and we switch over to daredevil basically becoming the new heimdall now this is not something that we really see very often right in fact i don't think we've ever really seen this before where heimdall has allowed somebody else especially an earthling to lift his sword and then recreate the bifrost but what this does is it allows the bifrost to be reformed and basically like the heroes uh, really kind of have a chance here as opposed to having almost like a guaranteed loss so it is kind of cool and, and it is really interesting but again switching back to the secret avengers this is one of the cool little moments that you don't see all that often in marvel comics when people think about characters like wolverine right like they think about like his healing factor they think about like his enhanced senses and so on and so forth and even when you kind of expand beyond wolverine and you look at characters like storm who can control the weather things like that they really only look at that through the lens of like how it affects earth but when it comes to characters like this they're universal right i mean storm she can control the weather on any other planet she's on so long as it has a climate that can deal with inclement weather that provides that kind of that kind of scenario and so because of that um when it comes to wolverine his ability to track senses it's universal no matter where he is in the universe he can pick up a scent of somebody uh, if they're in the general vicinity now it's not like wolverine can pick up a scent on earth and then travel to the other side of the universe and then track the scent back to earth it's not that it's not that strong it's not that capable but in this instance he knows the scent of thor and so no matter where thor is wolverine can pick it up if he's on the same planet essentially like if the winds blow and things like that and he can pick up the scent and so that's literally when they're in jotunheim and they're like okay so like we know how to find thor now there's two ways to find thor here the first is by you know using wolverine to track his scent the second is by following this giant river of, of frost giant blood that's literally flowing through the entire planet because thor is killing so many of them which is kind of cool <laughs> it's kind of awesome but again the other part of this is you also get to a degree something akin to the dark avengers in the sense that you've got punisher you've got blade you've got captain marvel um um and then you've got you know she hulk so and you kind of get like the dark avengers so literally like the secret avengers and the dark avengers sort of reform now it's not really the dark avengers in the traditional sense the dark avengers were just villains masquerading as avengers during dark reign but it's the dark avengers insofar as you're dealing with darker elements of the avengers team so that's why i really kind of call it the the dark avengers is really in name only but you know with ghost rider and all those 
those guys there, it really still just kind of serves the purpose. But the fact remains, like with them breaking into Svartalheim and then trying to find their way directly to where um to where the, the Black Bifrost is, things pop off exactly the way you would expect because you've basically got Blade and Punisher on one team. That's not going to go well for anybody. <laughs> what you end up having is literally Punisher being like, let's just kill them all. And you've got Blade like, I agree. And before anybody else is like, maybe we should think about that, they take off their masks and they start attacking everybody. <laughs> <laughs> which is kind of cool to see because that's the way they work right that, that's why they were so cool is because blade will just run in with his sword and just kill everybody you know kill all the vampires he sees and punisher will just run in and just shoot up all the villains he sees and like no quarters given none of that stuff it's just like you all you all have to die and it's kind of cool to see these aren't really guys who are well known for their tact they just go in and attack things so it's kind of interesting to see now from here we switch back over to earth and we actually change over to europe and we basically pick up with the fall of dane whitman what looks like megan and the new captain britain and this is interesting here because what you have is Malekith wielding the ebony sword. Now, this is a huge deal for if you're if you're not familiar with the stories of like of, of Black Knight, which it's probably fine if you're not. Black Knight is pretty obscure when it comes to like the comic book landscape. But the ebony blade was a sword that was fashioned by by Merlin. Now, eventually it was given to a guy named Percy. And basically he started wielding it to like attack everything and, and just like kill people, which gave it a bloodstained curse. Right. So like the blade, the blade basically like ash for blood and it'll it'll corrupt the person who wields it. But in Marvel Superheroes number 17, in 1968 there was a storyline that was established where merlin had put a kind of spell on the blade so that the person who wielded it could be injured but never killed and so what that means is that as long as malekith wields the ebony blade he cannot be killed for earth superheroes he's almost beyond reproach now right like almost completely untouchable there's really nothing they can do for him but seizing control of this uh you basically end up having him like run in and just start like attacking things again which is kind of cool which is which is is, is, is interesting and it serves its purpose and i don't know why i said that um that it was uh carol danvers on the the dark avengers team that's not her she's not in she's not she's not there she's not in svartalheim <laughs> <laughs> she's in Europe. That was uh, that was Freya. Um, no, she's in Europe with like with the existing Captain Britain, Venom, and Deadpool, and then uh, and then actually, well, really like Hulk Vereen. Hulk Vereen is weird. Okay, let's talk about this for a second. Hulk Vereen was basically a character created by William Stryker as uh, during the events of like the first X, uh, I think it was X Force story or something like that by Greg Pak, and it was basically trying to create like an ultimate being that could kill mutants. Uh, ultimately, it was defeated, and then you know Hulk Vereen kind of went on his own and did his own thing. It's okay. It's just Wolverine Hulk kind of merged together and like tearing things up uh and then of course venom being there now remember as far as i'm aware this is not eddie brock venom this is venom without this is the venom symbiote acting of its own accord without eddie brock remember we covered that in the venom stories with donny cates that you basically had like the venom symbiote and eddie brock which separated from each other and now the venom symbiote's out there doing its own thing absent eddie and so again like that really kind of seems to be what's going on here that theme is being maintained either that or it just kind of got snapped back together and i was somehow totally unaware of it so with that being the case it's really just kind of like marshalling what forces they can and it's kind of cool because we get the sort of overview of of what's going on by Jason Aaron, right? That's one of the great things about Jason Aaron writing. Jason Aaron will be like, okay, so here's where things stand. And then a bunch of stuff happens. And now here's where things stand. And then a bunch of stuff happens. It's really good because he's really, really good at kind of keeping you aware of like what all is going on at any point in time. And essentially what's taking place here is the world's gone to pot. That Atlantis is basically being attacked. Name of the Submariner fighting like flaming space sharks, which is kind of cool. Um, You have like like the, the angels, like literally the warriors of heaven of the, the 10th realm of the, the angels, which was cut off by Odin a long time ago uh they've basically invaded wakanda so they're attacking the dora malache i mean you've got like rocks on oil and everything the only thing really protecting manhattan right now is a fantastic four something for you to notice reed richards looks like john krasinski i just want to throw that out there he looks exactly like john krasinski i really hope somebody noticed that <laughs> I really hope somebody saw that. But again, like switching back over to where the Dark Avengers are in Svartalheim, once they actually access the Black Bifrost, suddenly Freya comes to the realization that the main Bifrost has been destroyed yet again. And so with the main Bifrost being destroyed, it seems like there doesn't really seem to be a way to bring it back. You would expect there would with Daredevil basically wielding the power of Heimdall. But again, it doesn't seem like that's the case because right now they're in the midst of fighting everybody. So literally you have like this giant horde of Dark Elves that came flooding into uh, into what remained of Avengers, Avengers um, Mountain. And then basically you have like daredevil and all of them fighting him with not enough time no real opportunity to recreate the bifrost because it takes time and so with that in mind like the the, the argument is okay if that bifrost is done if that bifrost is dead then what it basically means is if we destroy this black bifrost there's no way for us to get out of svartalheim we're trapped here by the time they do reform the bifrost or find some way to basically save us we'll be killed by all the forces of malekith because we're literally in his base of operations and so we're in the worst possible place we could be to get stuck and so the result is we hold we hold the bifrost we hold the black 
by Frost. We keep everybody at bay as best we can. We hold everybody back for as long as we can. And we and, and we literally do whatever we can do in order to keep everything going. And that's basically it. <laughs> There's no real option there. And so what we do is we pick back up with the Secret Avengers, again, finally locating Thor. But here's the problem. Thor at the moment right now is in the midst of a Berserker rage. Now, Thor usually enters the midst of this rage when battle goes on for too long. And it's literally exactly what you expect it is. It's Thor when he essentially loses his mind, loses all form of sanity, and really any understanding of who he is, and almost reverts to an animalistic state. It's very similar and almost completely identical to Wolverine's Berserker Rage. And so because of that, if they walk up to Thor right now and they say, hey Thor, we're here to rescue you, Thor will kill them. What you have to do is give it time to calm down. And so most likely what's going to happen is you're basically going to have Thor like kind of come down off his Berserker Rage. Hopefully you're going to have Thor fighting all, fighting like the Secret Avengers. That's going to make one hell of a clickbait video. Hopefully you're going to have that, but basically they're going to kind of like, they're going to have to bob and weave, dodge attacks until he starts to kind of wind down, right? Like it's like letting your adrenaline begin to drop off. Then it'll be regular Thor, who again is missing his arm, which hopefully it'll get reattached. <laughs> but again, it's it's cool. War of Realms is awesome. Like it's it's an amazing story. But with that being said, guys, we're going to bring this video to an end. If you are new here to Comics Explained, make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the Rob Corps. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like and yeah, I will catch you all later. Peace.